Mama Shilo, please, can you um, look after the audio? Okay, good morning, my fathers and mothers. We bless the name of the Lord for this new week. We thank God for grace, for goodness, for kindness. We thank God for the opportunity to share the word. We thank God for the opportunity to be fed with the word. We thank God for the season and the time that we are in, which is a season of Lent. So let's pray before we start the devotion this morning. Mighty God, mighty King, mighty Redeemer, we thank and bless your holy name. We exalt you, King Jesus. We thank you for that which you are doing in our lives. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for that which you have promised us. Thank you for new blessings. Thank you for new breakthrough. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. We thank you for the power of your word. As we share your word this morning, we ask you to fill us afresh, Holy Spirit. As we sit at the feet of our master, we ask you, O oh Lord, to inspire and encourage, empower us and transform us. Ignite us, O oh Lord, and heal all our diseases. This we ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Once again, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. We will continuously rejoice in it. So today is Monday 14th of March. And the topic today says prayer changes things. Prayer changes everything. And the Bible text is James chapter 5, verse 13 to 18. James chapter 5, 13 to 18. And I will read. It's talking about patience, kindness, and prayer. And it says, if you are having trouble, you should pray. And if you are feeling good, you should sing praises. If you are sick, ask the church leaders to come and pray for you. Ask them to put olive oil on you in the name of the Lord. If you have faith, when you pray for the sick people, they will get well. The Lord will heal them. And if they have sinned, he will forgive them. Uh, sorry, let me just see where it ends. And verse 16 says, if you have sinned, you should tell each other what you have done. Then you can pray for one another and be healed. The prayer of an innocent person is powerful and it can help a lot. Elijah was just as human as we are. And for three and a half years, his prayers kept the rain from falling. But when he did pray for rain, it fell from the skies and made the crops grow. May the Lord bless his word. So this is a text for today's morning devotion. It says, there is nothing that is impossible to the man or woman of prayers. Prayer as the amplified version of the Bible put it, makes tremendous power available and dynamic in its working ability to change the things and situations from bad to good. A good example has already been given to us in the scripture we read. Prophet Elijah, through the instrumentality of prayers, shut down the entire heavens from giving rain over the period of three years and six months. This man was, human, was a human being like you and me. The same man prayed and the heavens were opened and rain came down all because he knew how prayer worked and how he can change things through the law of prayer. Just like Elijah, we all can do even much more only if we reduce the time we use in watching unnecessary things and start to spend time with God in the place of prayer. Prayer does not only change things, but also changes people from weak to strong. It also makes the man or woman of prayer or host to of unusual possibilities that are only captured 
in God. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. Through the medium of prayer, over the time, many have returned with testimonies in scripture of the change of situations from worst to normal. Prayer itself does not change anything, but the power of God that is supplied by the Holy Spirit in prayer is what does the work. The duty of prayer is to connect us to the supernatural ability of God that should get the job done. The powers generated at the place of prayer changes both people and events because the power of prayer is dynamic in its workings for the ones that praise and for the ones he prays for. Now this is it. If any believer desires to change, desires change of whatever kind, the key to such a radical change is prayer. He or she must go to God in prayer and spend time with God so as to be endowed with the power to combat any and every situation that he or she experiences. And the prayer says, Father, impact me with a passion for prayers and the ability to tarry long in your presence in the place of prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So the topic today says, prayer changes things. We thank God for the word. That is a word of assurance to somebody here today, somebody listening to me today, to let them know that every impossibility can always be possible with the power of prayer. All you need to do is know how to pray. The Bible tells us that the effective fervent prayer of the righteous, it says it availeth much. And so we see here um, Apostle James talking about uh, patience, kindness, and prayer. But today we're looking at what prayer is. What is prayer exactly? Prayer is communicating with your maker, talking to your God. That is the simplest way of putting it, talking to your own God. But then to talk to your own God, you must know the language of God. You must know the language of heaven. It's like us from Nigeria, you're Yoruba, you want to speak to your, your dad, you have to speak in Yoruba. Perhaps you can't even speak in English. So if you can't speak in English, how is he going to understand? So you have to speak the language that he understands. That means the Bible says our God is holy. So you have to actually walk in holiness so that when you seek God, you will find him. So that when you ask, you will then be able to receive. He says some people ask, they ask amiss. If you walk in sin, there's no need to waste your time. You know, your prayers cannot be heard because the Bible says the eyes of the Lord cannot behold sin. And he encourages us this morning. He says, if you are having trouble, you should pray. And if you are feeling good, you should sing praises. So he says, if you are sick, ask the church leaders to come and pray for you. And then in verse 15, he says, if you have faith when you pray. So you must also have faith. You must have faith in believing in the word of God, that what he says he will do, he will do. I find nowadays that a lot of us cannot pray. A lot of us cannot pray because we do not read the word. When we read the word, we understand the language of God. We understand how to talk to God because we've seen the prophets of old, the Elijahs, the Deborahs, the David, the Joseph. We've seen how they communicated with God. We've seen Hezekiah, all these old people in the Bible, how they communicated with God and the power that came out of it. In the night uh, uh, Bible reading that we do, we saw last week what the power of prayer is, even from our um, deliverer, Jesus Christ, our Savior. He taught us the basic of how to pray by doing our Lord's Prayer. 
But we see when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, when he called about, about to his disciples and said, come and pray, you know, he says, can you not watch with me for one hour? That means the minimum requirement of an effective Christian should actually be an hour in the room of prayer. You know, some, I see a lot of times when we are asked to pray, when we are asked to lead in prayer, what we do is we actually sing. And we see here, it actually says, if you are having trouble, pray. And then he says, if you are feeling good, sing. <laughs> See the word? So that is why we need to know the word and store it in our hearts. So if you are feeling good, you want to praise the Lord, you want to sing healing, you want to do these things, sing. But if you have a troubled mind, you need to talk to the Lord. You need to pray. You need to fire. You need to know the tools to use. You know, need to know the weapons to use. The Bible says the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. So if it's not carnal, that means we need to know what tools to use and the right tools to use, where to use. The Bible says the word of God is alive. So if the word of God is alive, when I'm praying, I have to use the word of God. I have to let the enemy know that I know my right. As a child of God, we see only the temptations of our Lord Jesus Christ. The more the enemy brought the word, you know, and the enemy quoted it from the Bible, the more Jesus went back and returned it back with the word of God. And so we need to know the word of God for prayers to make a shift. There is no point you not equipping yourself with the word of God because you would be a lazy Christian. The Bible says an effective fervent. It has to be effective. It has to be fervent prayer of a righteous. That means you're right standing with God. That means you are living a life, intentional life of walking in holiness and walking in forgiveness, of walking in humility. Yesterday we talked about, in church, we talked about envy and pride. And so um, I want to encourage us really that for everything there's, a, there's an opposite. So for envy means love. For pride means humility. So God wants me to cast away envy. That means I have to develop love, intentionally develop love for everyone I come across, even to my enemies, to learn how to love them. If he says cast out pride, it means I need to envelope humility. I need to develop humility the more in my life so that when I now approach the holies of holies, I would be able to enter into the presence of God because I am walking in humility. I'm walking in love. I am speaking the language of God. He says, it's not everybody that calls me father that I know. And so are you speaking the language of God? Do you know what the promises of God is for your life? It's no point praying rubbish prayers, you know, Prayers avail it much. And so if things are not working right in your life, in my life, the first thing we need to go to, assess myself, assess my prayer life. Am I praying correctly? Am I walking in the will of God? He says, ask, you shall receive. Are you asking correctly? We saw it, you know, that is why you need to be a student of the Bible. When Jesus went to, I think it's uh, Bacchus, the blind man, when the man was screaming up he, on the top of his lungs, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. You know, Jesus said, what exactly do you want? So there's no point to say, oh, no, shano for me, shano for me, shano for me. Kinin tofe, uni beri, wariba. So if you don't know these principles, he says to Bacchus, what exactly do you want? He says, Lord, that I might see. Yes, I need mercy, but the mercy is to see. So 
This morning, the Lord is awakening us during this 40 days that we are walking with him in the wilderness, that we should get to know him the more. We should get to know his language the more. We should let, get to know the things that he loves the more. When you love God, you would love his business. It will not be all about you, myself, and I, and my family. It will be about humanity. It will be about your brethren. It will be about the sick, the weary, the tired, the childlessness. It will be about our children, not just your children, the children of the church, the children of the community. So you will have a heart for God. Say, so seek thee first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So when you seek these things, when you seek peace, where there is no peace, when you seek love, when there is no love in the community, in your church, in your family, then before you even ask, you will receive. And ask, and ask specifically. That's why it says the effective, fervent prayer of the, so there is one, effective, two, fervent, prayer, three, Righteous four, you need to tick all those four boxes before one prayer is heard. So there is walk to prayer. How do I pray? What is the tools that I need to pray? Is my prayer a prayer of healing? Do I know the promises of God on healing? Do I know the God of healer? What is his name? Where has he done miracles in the Bible that I can refer him to? You know, we see Jesus and, and Satan tackling each other. You know, he says, ah, you're hungry, turn the stone to. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. So I know what I know. I know the word of God. I know how it works. So the deceiver cannot come and deceive me. And so the word says to us in, this, in, in, in today's text, it says, if you have faith, when you pray for the sick, they shall get well. So are you using your prayer life just for yourself? Or are you using your prayer life for God's kingdom? What is going on around you? The sick, the weary, the tired, the children who are depressed, you know, those people who are needing financial breakthrough, war in the world, kidnapping. We had the, 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 the prayer is this morning talking about the, the troubles we're going through in Nigeria. The kingdom of light is warring against the kingdom of darkness. That is where we are called. We are called to stand in the gap. You know, we saw it um, last week. I will keep on referring to, because this is what we're supposed to do, to encourage one another with the word of God. We saw when God want to, wanted to execute the whole uh, Israelites in the wilderness, we saw how Moses stood the gap and interceded and pleaded on behalf of a whole nation. God said to Moses, no, I'm going to start afresh with you. If you lived in the flesh, you'd be, ah, that's good now. It's going to start with me. But because he knew the heart of God, do you know the heart of your father? You're calling him father, 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 but you don't have any attributes of father. You know, so you need to understand the language of heaven to ask heaven to open up. You need to command. Bible says you've been given the power. You know, angels are at our beckon. We have all these things, but do we access it? Do we have the right tool? It says, knock, the door shall be open. How are you knocking the door? How are you using your mouth, the tongue? <coughs> are you using it effectively? Are you using it, you know, to bless God's people? Or are you using it, you know, to curse people? Are you using it? to spite people. You can't live in sin and say, grace will abound. And so today, we thank God for a new week. A new week means there's a new opportunity for you and I 
the fact that we are still alive, the fact that God wake, woke us up by his grace to see another day, another day of blessing, another day of wonders, another day of change, means there's another opportunity for you and I to turn around. Our father says this is our year of supernatural turnaround. Supernatural means beyond our own imagination. It means grace has been given to us to change things around, to start afresh. And so this day, Monday, is for us to go back during our walks this morning, reflect on our lives. Am I actually praying? You know, sometimes I've been places where we are called to pray and all we do is sing. And I just wonder, you know, somebody is praying, somebody brings a song. Somebody is praying, somebody brings a song. We need to be sensitive in the spirit. We need to know when it's time to pray and time to sing. That's what the word says to us here. There is a time for everything. And so don't let's get us twisted. Don't let us let the enemy make us look warm. So, so much so that we are not used to praying anymore. Effective fire prayer. Prayer to kill, to destroy, to uproot. You can't do it with a melancholy spirit. You can't just sit down and expect the thief, he says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. It comes at the uh, midnight, you know, and you're busy sleeping. You're busy sitting down. You can't even pray. You're so weak. The enemy has, has battered you, and you don't know. And so this morning, let's check our spiritual lives. Do I have the right tools? Am I walking in power? Am I walking in victory? Am I decreeing? Am I declaring? Am I on fire for God? Am I angry about the enemy and what the enemy is doing to my brethren, to my city, to my church? Holy anger, it's about time. You know, we take up holy anger and fight the good fight of faith. The Bible says where two or three people are gathered in my name, there I am. And so when begin to cooperate uh, intentionally, Look around, search online, join prayer groups. How do they pray? Buy books about praying. What are the promises of God? Their books, 99P, you know, about 199 promises of God. The promises on healing, the promises of deliverance, the promises on, 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 on spiritual uh, gifts. You need to be able to speak the language of heaven. Bible says it availeth much. He says to us, if the prophet of God, Elijah, who is the same human like you and I, can pray and ask the heaven to cease for three years, and it happened, can you imagine what we can do? And so I know this thing takes the grace of God. We need, if you are hungry for it, it says, when you are the righteous, it says, blessed are the righteous who are hungry for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So if you are hungry to be an intercessor, if you are hungry to be a weapon in the hands of God to destroy the kingdom of darkness, then when you seek it, you will find it. But you can't find it sitting down. You need to find it in the word of God. Underline it, the prayers. Underline it, the book of Psalm. Underline it, memorize it. What does God say I need to cast out? We looked at in Colossians 3 yesterday, you know, all the things he said, so many of them, we cannot afford to harbor it in our flesh. The more you harbor these things, you become drawn to darkness. We need to move towards light because we are children of light. And so when we walk in holiness, it says we will bind on earth if we be bound in heaven. We will lose on earth. It will be loose in heaven. Be aware that the kingdom of God suffered violence. And he says, we take it by force. It's not a time to have lukewarm prayers. It is not a time to sit down, you know, and start praying and start singing. It is a time to begin to uproot. It is a time to begin to destroy. 
Every spirit of lukewarmness, I commit against it in the name of Jesus. I uproot it from my life. I uproot it from my church. I uproot it from my children. I decree holiness. I decree power. I decree authority upon my life, upon my children, upon my business. <coughs> These are the things we need to be able to say. So that when you, by the time you leave, a prayer, maybe in your, even in your, in your own room, you need to be on fire, practice it in your own room. Let heaven be with you in your own room. Let the angels of God surround you. There is an angel for every need. There is an angel for every purpose. There's an angel for every hour. That is why we have these designated hours to pray. Begin to fire up. The Lord will hear our prayer in this 2022 in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a year of supernatural turnaround. It will be so for our lives, our church, our children in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we need to wake up. It's the, the, the word says wake up and smell the coffee. We need to wake up. We need to ginger ourselves. We need to take off all those garments of lukewarmness. Bible says that God does not want a lukewarm person, neither hot, neither cold. You are look, he says he's going to spit you out. So if you are a woman of prayer, if you are a man of prayer, then let us know it. Come out. There is no need. You know, when they, anybody at any time call you out, please come and lead us in prayer. And you should be on fire for God, because you've equipped yourself in your house. You've already trained your mind, trained yourself. You already know the realms of the spirits through the word of God. You know, you already know what tools. You are a soldier of Christ. You are a you know, these things, you need to shatter it in the spiritual realm using the blood of Jesus, all these kind of things. And so let us this week assess our lives or is it assess? Yeah, assess your spiritual life. Score yourself and don't deceive yourself. Score yourself. Am I spiritually on fire? Am I walking for God? Am I an intercessor? You know, we see Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham wanting to intercede. He says, if God says, yes, I won't kill the whole city, the whole nation, if there's only five people, who will I send? Who will go for me? And then I said, here I am, angel, Lord, send me. And why am I saying God send me? Because I'm confident that when he sends me, I will be able to stand. We know that our weapons of our warfare is not carnal. We know that we are fighting agents of darkness that are more powerful than us. But the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So we know that every king standing as Pharaoh in our lives will be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Every Goliath in our lives will be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Every prince of Pasha in our lives will be destroyed in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So let us pray. Mighty God, mighty King, we just want to say thank you once more. We know that when we ask, we will receive. And so we ask, oh Lord, for divine revelation that you will equip us with the tools of heaven to be able to pray effectively, that you will show us the way to walk, that we will walk righteously. Every sin of our lives that is causing us not to walk with you, we uproot by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We envelope ourselves with the spirit of God. We envelope ourselves with the Holy Spirit that as we walk this walk this week, that heaven will intercede for us. Heaven will bless us. We send the word of God out today. Those that need healing, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the sick receive their help in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are trusting God for financial breakthrough, that God will visit them from the north, from the south, from the west, from the east. Winds of favor will blow upon them. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Once again, I greet you all. 
have a blessed week. Let's not forget 12 noon, Jesu Bami, Jesu no lo leg bagu boa, agbara dwa no lan so ni lori la roi. So a jakawasi um Jesu Bami. And let's not forget 9 p.m. the one year Bible. Have a blessed day all. God bless. Bye.